see if we can just um, show the YouTube video. So let's just get this microphone off from here. I can connect it to the phone. Here we go. I hope this is going to be better than the phone. Hello and welcome everybody. <clears throat> It's been a while, so I thought I was just going to do a little bit of a Q&A with my carbon kit here. The whole thing happening on a beautiful moose hide shot and tanned in Ontario. We are actually not completely straight here. Sorry for that. Okie dokie. Let's see if anybody is actually tuning in. While we're doing that though, just going to talk about a couple of tools. I'm going to get them out so we can talk about them. Because I receive a lot of questions and I'd like to address them. I think that's, that's good for now. So, hello and welcome everybody to um, the channel Woodsman's Finest. This is Max. And we are talking today about a couple of tools, question and answers because I keep receiving very similar questions. So in my videos, I'm already trying to talk about most of my different tools, of course, some review them, present them, whatever you would like to say. But a lot of them are very specific. Not all of them are very easy to come by. And I understand that this can be sometimes a little bit frustrating and leaves quite a lot of questions open. So, first of all, if you are looking at a tool out there on the market and you have a question about it, chances are that you will find a video somewhere on my channel. So I would definitely recommend you to have a look. If you do not find a tool review on my channel, then it very, very likely is in the making. What I've been trying to do recently is that despite a lot of the tools that I'm using are, they're all fabulous. I really love um, working with all of these different makers, maybe Hans Carlsen, of course, the Carlsen Axe, um, the Carlsen Hook Knife, maybe Nick Westerman, um, Nick Westerman Blade, right on this puppy here. Of course, you've seen this knife um, on social media. And such before um, made of course in Japan by me with Sakura sheath and half tent leather um, may be one of my Tuka cams this is the smaller one I've got the bigger one as well and in fact just finished filming a video about this specific 50 millimeter Tuka cam so um, you can expect that one very shortly maybe Mora of course Got several more and there's nothing wrong with those. Maybe Reach Schwartz. Of course, then Reach Schwartz all round hook knife got a really, really huge praise by people. And um, he has moved on to producing the Sanderson hook, of course, which I also got right here. Got tangled up in a couple of Japanese knives. Sorry, folks. So this is, of course, my Bodger's bib, piece of elk neck. This is elk neck here as well. Uh, Japanese leather knife that I'm using, of course, for all of these leather sheaths and stuff. They're all made by me. Um, so here we got the Sanderson hook. Video coming up. Um, it is life-changingly good. I can only say it is life-changingly good. So is the all the Tuka cams. But... This is a knife that I haven't really come across the way it is, and it is mind-blowing. So if you're into tools, then um, I really got to say hook knives, Nick Westerman, and Reach Schwartz. Whatever wait time it is, whatever it costs, do it. 
because it will serve you a lifetime. You will make things a lifetime long with them. And as soon as you feel like you you need some money, you change your hobbies, you know, carving is not for you, whatever it is, put it online and it will be gone in 25 seconds for the price you bought it or more. So it is just an investment, like, I don't know, in, in wine or whatever. And of course, um, I've also got a couple of Moko tokens, some I forged myself. And here we got another Nick Westerman Moko token with the hollow on the bottom, very reminiscent of Japanese knives in that case, which I have a great comparison here, by the way, that I haven't really shown a lot. This is a miniature, a miniature Yariganna from Japan. I bought in Japan, very reminiscent of Moko Togans, but more reminiscent even of West Coast car um, First Nations carving tools. It is in fact looks identical apart from the hollow on the bottom these Yariganos have. The top and the shape and even the handle look absolutely identical to West Coast carving knives you can for example buy from Kestrel for carving cedar from predominantly for masks um, and other craft work. So this is a mind-blowing um, cultural connect you can see in this tool. Um, not very far from the Canadian West Coast or American West Coast to, of course, Siberia and Japan. That's on the side. But yeah, Moko tokens as well I use for all kinds of stuff, especially cleaning up stuff and paddle carving. Um, and of course, um, you know, bow carving etc etc so these leather sheaths that i made there they were really just for traveling back to europe after picking this stuff up from, from north america and uh, they're hard to use anyways just on these it's just really difficult shape to make a tool for what i want to say about that is that investing into quality tools whatever it is you will never regret you will always get easier like let's say you're going to be reaching your potential and even beyond your potential reach your goals in carving and crafting with better tools easier than with tools that are not specifically designed innovated made for the task there's no doubt about that however that does not mean that you can take a tool that maybe Slightly subpar, maybe also because of the cost it is some, it's aimed to sell for. That doesn't mean that you can comes out of the box. And in, in, in that specific case, I really talk about some cheaper hook knives available in the market right now. The Mora hook knives being maybe the most famous, of course, of a subpar tool that needs some modification in order to actually perform quite well. The Mora Sloyd knife here in a variety um, with a leather stacked handle, um, some brass, some antler, and some um, burl wood in the handle um, that I made. This is a modified hollow ground Mora 106 blade, highly polished, that I absolutely love using. I'm not using this any less at the moment, maybe even more than a lot of my high-end knives, just because I like the variety and I like the the options um, that this knife gives me. And I nearly feel like I'm not having a, as hard of a, I'm not, I'm not as careful with it in a way. I don't know if that makes sense. It is a very, very fine. Don't underestimate a $15 Mora knife blade that you can buy off Amazon. For example, in my personal spoon crafter and bush carver starter shop that I've put up just in order to really give people the option to get into the craft for um, quickly and on a budget, like in my video, Spoon Carving on a Budget, where I'm trying to tell you whatever you find maybe on a, on a, on a farmer's market, uh, I mean, on a, on a yard sale, flea market, something like that, 
axe, whatever gouge might be usable, an old whittling knife that you refurbish might be usable. And for that reason, I'm also going to have some reviews coming up on this channel here that's going to be talking about um, cheaper options that you can get online. I'm, I'm working with um, a company from Ukraine right now that make handmade tools in Ukraine um, that really also had this problem that they had a problem that they couldn't find tools available for courses for themselves, but not. Um, so they started producing tools themselves in the Ukraine. So we're still talking about a company with a great ethic, great um, um, approach and mindset about tools. Just wanted to make it a little bit more approachable for, for people. So yes, this is something that's going to come up on my channel very shortly. Because of course, I got to keep creating content. And another reason I, I personally order a lot from Amazon may it be my, my oils, um, my, the sandpaper for sharpening the auto sole, um, the most universal stropping compound I've ever come across that I've been using for years that I just did a video about. Um, this comes from Amazon. Whenever I'm around like the world, I always know that I can get these things shipped to me wherever I am. Um, because in where I'm from Austria, I, I can hardly buy any of this stuff. My, my camera equipment to a very big part comes from Amazon. Um, I have the the security to be able to ship stuff back. Um, I can read how, what people think about products. The customer service is usually pretty good. And despite the fact that not everything about Amazon is great, and I totally agree about that, um, there's also a lot of things great about it. So it is always a little bit of a double-edged sword. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that, but I thought it would be great to do a shop like this where I only put my tools that I the stuff that I get from Amazon as well I don't know like tripods for making videos if you doing your own spoons you want to show your own stuff it's very important to have good camera equipment for example um, so I put the camera equipment there that I'm using like I said sandpaper sharpening stones um, um, of course the stropping compound Mora knives other knives that are going to come up here as well certain axes that are very widely usable may it be the um, Holtbrook's um, Carpenter's Axe, for example, other axes like the Grandsfoss Brooks Small Forest Axe that I've been traveling through the thickest boreal Canadian forest with on, on canoeing um, tours, canoe trips um, for a week at a time with fishing equipment, you know, like fishing your own food every night, stuff like that. This axe as well is totally capable, like I'm showing in this video that I did specifically about this axe. Still usable as a one-handed carving axe if need be, or if you can only afford one axe. And get one of these, and it's going to be serving you in most things you can imagine. Felling, splitting, limbing, bucking, um, carving, finer tasks, even hunting. Maybe like, um, you know, hitting, getting getting um, some skinning shop just done or something like the pole of the axe can come in handy. This is a great, great tool. And the way it's done still is also really impressive. And I say it again, there's a lot of good axes out there. I have custom axes that I have made myself. Like this is my signature axe that I designed, made by Liam Hoffman, um, the craft carver. It's my brain baby, mine and Liam's of course. Um, I'm so proud of this axe. I love this thing. But is it the most versatile tool? No, it's a specific carving axe that was designed to do carving jobs like spoons, bowls, stock removal for turning, um, you know, like carving paddles out of the board, stuff like that. And this axe here um, is, of course, a little, a little bit less specific, but therefore still, you know, just a beautiful thing. It has, by the way, one of my custom axes on it with a bunch of different features that I'm going to talk about now. However, um, this is, of course, as well in that shop, but also the a little bit cheaper equivalent, which is um, the um, the Wetterlings variety or the Hold Force, because they're a little bit cheaper, but still very, very good axes. What I'm trying to get it is that um, I would want to make do something with Amazon that would support my endeavors here a little bit because 
spending the time on YouTube, getting all these tools, um, doing my own craft, of course, buying camera equipment, um, getting the subscription for Adobe, um, you know, Pro Cut, getting the subscription of the the music platform where I'm getting my music for my videos for, all of this stuff costs a lot of money and time. So I'm not aiming to make money with YouTube, but if YouTube would pay at least for the expenses that I have just in order to then share my stuff, this is just a little bit of a calculation that I would like to get closer to zero than being wherever in the minuses. Um, and I, I think that's absolutely understandable. So this is one reason why I did the Amazon shop. The other reason was that I would like to, people to be able to just go and get their starter kits and just start carving. They will still, without a doubt, if they stick with it, really be stoked to get on a waiting list for a Reed Schwartz knife, for a Nick Westerman knife, for a Woodsman's Finest um, craft carver from Liam for a, if too heavy for you, for whatever reason, although I'm possibly, of course, you know, but another beautiful option I don't want to keep from you. Maybe you want to wait for a Hans Carlson ax. Um, for me, just a slight tad light for making it my complete all round carving ax, but still for smaller spoons, smaller projects, this is probably the best tool in the world that is somehow readily available, affordable. You know, I will not get rid of either of these ever. I can rip them from my cold, dead hands, so to say. But maybe this is a little bit much, you know, decision, maybe a little bit much for your budget, maybe a little bit much waiting time in the very beginning. There is nothing wrong with a Mora 106. My recommendation is always the 105 because of the bigger and modifiable handle. Um, there's nothing wrong with a Mora hook knife or a Beavercraft hook knife that needs a little bit of sandpaper and some stropping in order to get a convex bevel. There's nothing wrong with your, as I'm doing it a lot on Instagram, you can see there's nothing wrong with a X head that is 500 grams, 600 grams, whatever it is that you find on a local yard sale that's 80 years old from beautiful steel that you need to take a X file to that you as well find, of course, in my um, Amazon shop. An X file that you're going to put a somewhat straight bevel on both sides, put a handle on, which I'm teaching you on this channel as well, how to... Um, carve and then half an axe for carving and there you go that gave you including the axe some wood here and there whatever sandpaper and stropping compound you need you have your own carving axe that you brought back to life for 10 bucks 15 bucks maybe you get an axe head for five bucks on a yard sale spend 10 15 20 bucks on a file on some sandpaper and there you go um I still have axes like this that I've modified in the very beginning of my own carving journey. I have done so many axes from old axe heads. So I'm, I'm giving you all of these options though, which, and still, I think at some point in your carving journey, if you stick to it, you will come back to feeling like I would really like to get these fine, fine edges, this um, ball bearing steel, or this silver steel, or this very, very highly, highly refined carbon steel that Reed Schwartz uses. Um, I don't think these two things will ever be in each other's way. So that's why I'm also not having any problem promoting cheaper carving tools, because as far as I've found, pretty much all the carving tools online that are still ready, like available and cheaper, are still made by companies who are producing in their own countries with a certain mindset that I would like to support and just want to get people into carving. 
So these are the most questions I usually get that I just try to answer. What tool should I start with? What app should I start with? Um, do I have to get very expensive tools in order to start carving? Where do I find information about tools? Here, 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 and if it's not here, then it's on other channels you get recommended by watching here. Um, I wanted to, I gave you a long video about wood types and what I recommend. There is a good video out there even about reviving dry wood that I've done. There is tool videos about pretty much all high-end tools out there, some um, production access as well, and even about cheap options and budget options in my video that is about how to start wood spoon carving on a budget. There is also a video out there that I've done about what type and size and weight of axe to use. And again, I think you should use the heaviest axe that you can still comfortably and efficiently work with because it helps you. The axe is first of all carving for you. And second of all, it's going to help you with the, um, the aiming process, so to say. A heavier axe is just more difficult to... Um, it's more forgiving, let's say it that way. It's more forgiving, just like when, like if you do archery, which a lot of people out there are aware of, um, a heavier arrow, a heavier setup, whatever it is, is more forgiving because it's just gonna, it's gonna be harder to move in a way. Um, with a heavier axe, that means whatever mistakes you make side to side, the axe is just rather just going with the gravity, and it's it's harder for you to to make mistakes left or right, which is usually the problem with the axe, getting too far into the spoon. Um, so this is a little bit of a crude description of what I'm talking about, but let's just keep it with heavier axes being more forgiving. That's why I'm recommending using the heaviest axe you can use. This is why as well, I love the Carlson Sloyd X to death. Like I said before, you can bury me with this thing. For the stuff that I was using though, like axing out paddles, heavy stock removal, as I said in the video, I found I had to do nearly twice as many blows as with an axe. It's just 100, 150 grams heavier. This is why I, uh, like one reason why I wanted to design my craft carver that is just about 100 and 150 grams heavier, still way lighter than other axes on the market. So I found that this is most efficient for me to use all day, every day with the best effect in a workpiece. Does that mean that this axe is not fabulous and has its eternal place in the Hall of Fame of carving tools? No, it doesn't mean that. It's just a little bit too light for me to be the one on only axe that I own and use, period. So with this video, I wanted to try to clear up a couple of these questions. I hope I did. Usually when there is anything coming up, usually when there's anything I would like to recommend you, of course, in the videos about specific tools, you always find the um, link and the, the um, contact information in the comment section. Sometimes it happens that these links are outdated, but very often I just don't hear that from the makers, whatever happens, but then a short Google Mr. Google question should really help you find it. Um, because I had a questions, questions like that too. Yeah, this link, this and that, it doesn't work anymore. Well, if I was talking about the Hans Carlson Sloyd X for 20 minutes in a the video, then chances are if you give, like you type in Hans Carlson Sloyd X on Google, Google is gonna spit out a way better answer than I can ever give you anyways. So this is highly recommended too. So since there's at least two people now live watching, and I hope there's a couple more going to be later today. Um, actually, let's see. Do we have anything? Oh, this is for live chat. I as well hope that this is reco recording sound. Um, maybe somebody out there is willing to give me a thumbs up or throw in a whatever, something. There's two people watching apparently right now, so... I hope this is actually recording sound. Yeah. Anything else? So we went through the ask questions. 
questions about getting started in spoon carving, thank you very much. Master, blink once for yes and blink twice for no kind of situation right now. If if you want to get started in spoon carving, what I'm recommending to you is reading. Sorry, I'm just getting, having a call coming in. That's great live video. I'm recommending you to read the standard literature by Hans Carlson and Barn the Spoon and Robin Wood did a really good one. Jane Michalborok just came out with a beautiful book as well. For me, my standard book to start with was um, Swedish Carving Techniques by Willis Sundquist. Did I just say Hans Carlson? I didn't mean Hans Carlson, of course. Willis Sundquist, um, the godfather of spoon carving, um, unfortunately passed away really recently, which was, of course, a huge blow to the whole spoon carving community because he might be one of the main reasons that a lot of people got started, um, or at least he helped them tremendously getting started, as it was in my case. It's a beautiful book. You're learning so much in that book. And even after carving for years, you can still read that book and find so many new things. Another book that I just recently reviewed myself on this channel here, and I highly recommend, and which is, of course, as well in my Spoon Crafter and Carver Startup Shop, is Spoon, Spoon, or in German as well, Löffel, um, which is translated in German, the book as well by Barn the Spoon. It's a beautiful book, the photography, the information is beautiful. It's a lot more background principle style information that I really enjoy. And it's very affordable. I have it in hard copy and I as well have it on my Kindle on my phone because I think that um, it's fabulous and I just wanted to take it with me. So I did with my Swedish spoon carving or Swedish carving technique book by Willis Sundquist, by the way. This as well, hard copy and on my Kindle phone app. So this is what I totally recommend really for people to get started with. Get literature. Videos, as I've recently heard, are a little bit more like um, dropping a $20 bill into a sewage, whatever, like into, into a sewage system. You kind of have to dig through a lot of you know what in order to get your $20 bill back. It is very easy to find spoon carving videos online. It's very hard to find good information online. I'm hoping I am in the second category, or at least I'm really trying to. But to give a total beginner just the option to go on YouTube and watch stuff, I find it too dangerous because there's a lot of people on YouTube and I'm, I hope I'm not sounding like a total dick, but there's a lot of people on YouTube um, who claim to, to teach spoon carving, but they are really have to be categorized as beginners. And if I'm personally learning something, since my lifetime is limited, I'm trying to search for the best out there and learn from them. Yes, if you're a total beginner, even an advanced beginner is still going to know something that you don't know. And I'm not saying that those people do not know anything. But instead of getting started with somebody who is a little bit ahead of me and make all the mistakes they still make in and learning those mistakes, I'd rather go somewhere where I think that people know what they're doing and then trying at least, aiming for getting it right in the first in the first. Um, attempt or in the first place um just finish this guy here unfortunately the light is getting really bad outside i still hope that you can see the facets back on this guy this is one of my pocket suites it has the facets running through the entire spoon it has of course my ergo keel which is a little bit like a thumb ramp and then it's carbonized, it's carbonized birch. A lovely little spoon. The pheasants on the front, you can hardly see, it's just too dark by now. And it has a Japanese roof finial. And my pearl scallops on the side of the handle. So 
I'm trying to get you from a tree to something along these lines here. And it shouldn't take you too long, you know. A spoon like this maybe takes 45 minutes, maybe an hour from a tree to this. And then, of course, carbonizing and oiling. Anyways, so I really hope that I asked, answered a couple questions. If you have more questions or you have another video like this, take very soon. I'd love to do this and then maybe have a little bit more engagement here, uh, which is sometimes difficult because most of you are sitting either somewhere in the UK or further towards the west of me, which is then, of course, across the pond. So the time difference is a little bit tricky for a lot of you um, and for me as well to still have a little while I'm doing this video. So um, if you would like some more of these videos, maybe I'll talking about more specific tools like this Japanese gouge here or this beautiful Siberian Bihach, which is a Yakut knife, then let me know and I'd like to do some more of these live Q&A session. Just write the questions in the comment section. I'm happy to write them down and really specifically address them next time. I hope for now um, I was able to clear a couple of things up. Again, if you have um, any, um, if you're searching for a certain product or if you're searching for a certain review, please just scroll through my older videos by going through to my channel first and then on videos and then just scrolling down. You're finding tool reviews. You're finding a lot of information about how to um, use the tools, what to carve in. Um, Pro tips, which is mostly my background information, principles, things that are maybe falling, um, you know, in different category than just techniques, no longer just the line of a method. I remastered a couple of things recently as well, so I hope you enjoy those too. And yeah, so that's the one thing. And for my social media, of course, you're learning a lot. I think as well, just following the my work that I'm doing and the people as well that are surrounding uh, surrounding me in the same kind of same same kind of crew, so to say, that you can usually get re recommended. Anyways, if you're on Instagram and you're following me, then there's other people popping up who do absolutely incredible work as well. So just following these daily posts of pictures of work, for example, is very often as well just helping because. We never just post a picture without a caption. A caption talking about what we did in the specific um, scenario, why we did it. So you, you can't like, yeah, you can copy, imitate these designs and stuff for a while, but you can't really copy a vision. That's why eventually you will develop your own vision, what you want to do with it, why are you carving a certain style? Um, what is your purpose? Attractive outcome attractive designs and lines come from a purpose and you will find that through um, thinking through why a certain pro you know pro did a certain type of spoon and and we're talking about that this is all education that we share so that is what you find down below in the description box as well as of course um my spoon crafter and spoon uh, spoon craft and bush carver Startup shop down in, on Amazon that I was talking about before. And in the future, there's going to be a couple other links down there that I don't want to talk about yet. Um, for the reason that usually if I announce something and I, it takes a little bit longer. Um, it happens very often that um, I'm inspiring some other people to do that first. So I decided to be a little bit more um, secretive about certain things. It's just a... a just a um, unfortunate development that you know experience that I've been making over the last few years so but nonetheless it's gonna be quite a lot of fun I think so stay tuned again if you have any questions I hope I can answer them and I hope you're gonna have another um, still like this is it's not pretty it's, it's not so long anymore and I can feel that I'm getting tired. <laughs> Just hopping between German and English can be a little bit hard for the brain. So uh, I hope you have a nice rest of your Sunday, wherever you are, as you're surrounded by cool people and having a good time. And I hope you're safe. So I got to see you next time, folks. Cheers.